everyone, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today we are going to learn how to make this awesome Easter bunny lovey pillow. Now when we make loveys, usually they're um, little animals on top of tiny little blankets, but I thought how cool would it be to do a similar thing with a pillow. Um, so this is my pattern. So if you make it, great. If you sell it, great. You can do all of those wonderful things. Just please give me a shout out if you share it. Um, if you share my pattern or you um, do anything like that and please don't sell my pattern. So anywho, I'm so glad you're here watching with me today. I am on Facebook Live so um, later on I'm going to upload this on YouTube as well. So if you um, hear me talking to anyone, that's why. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so please go ahead and like and share and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit that bell. Um, and if you're on Facebook, there should be a notify me button somewhere on the live video portion of where you're viewing that can let you know when my videos are live. So let's get to the materials. So for this bunny, obviously you can use whatever colors you choose to use, but I'm going to let you know what I used. I used um, Red Heart Super Saver White, um, Sand uh, Red Heart Super Saver, um, Pink Super Saver, uh, this is all done with Red Heart, um, and a light pink. Um, super saver and a black so those are the colors that you're gonna need but obviously you can make it any way you wanted to you could do a pink pillow with a white bunny you could do it whatever you, whatever you wanted to do you're also going to need a darning needle a pair of scissors and I am using a five millimeter or size H hook okay so <clears throat> let me go ahead and put my camera down and sorry, my um, my quilting mat is getting all dirty because um, I also use this area to paint with. But hi, Sammy, how are you doing? Um, but so we're going to go ahead and start. And what I'm going to show you how to do first is I'm going to show you how to do the head of the bunny. Now, I'm just going to briefly, I know people hate it when you talk. So if you want to fast forward, you can later. <laughs> if you're on live, you have no choice but to hear me ramble. Um, but basically what I think it's great to explain things a little bit um, so basically what you're gonna do is if you know a lot about crocheting you're gonna increase enough to get the size circle that you need for the bunny head um, and then you're simply going to sew that on to your hi Rita you're gonna sew that on to your pillow and then you're gonna stuff it you're gonna leave a little place and you're gonna stuff it but before I get into any of that, I've if you've been watching my videos leading up to this one and you've seen the feather stitch, um, that this pillow is done with the feather stitch, the actual pillow itself. And I'm not going to show you how to do that today because I already have a video on how to do that feather stitch. It will. Um, it is on my Facebook um, page if you need to look at it. And when I upload this onto YouTube, I will put it on the end cards. I will put it on the card up top. I will put it in the link. There will be so many ways, easy ways to find this feather stitch. But for this pillow, I did um, 50 across and um, sorry, I'm counting. I did 50 across chain wise so you're going to start with 50 and you're going to go back and end up with 49 and then I went up 20 okay um, and then I finished off with a half double crochet at the top I did two of those okay and then I sewed them together okay with the same stitch that I used to show what um, sew together my mosaic granny squares so I will also link that as well um, but it's really simple. You just line them up and you sew them together. And then once you get all your sides sewn, you flip it inside out. Just like if you were sewing a pillow, if you're familiar with sewing. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you today, I left the top open and I'm gonna show you how to close it up. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the bunny face and stuff. So I will link all those other videos for you, how to join it together and the feather stitch. Okay, but what I'll be showing you today is how to do the head, how to do the ears, and how to do the other stuff. Okay. Okay. 
but can y'all let me know if it's if the sick if y'all are hearing everything okay I'm just gonna go ahead and continue okay so the first thing that we're gonna start on like I said before is the bunny head so we're going to make a slip knot and there's two ways that you can do this when you start you can either do a magic circle and do do six single crochet into the magic circle or you can chain two and do six single crochet into the second chain from the hook and that's the way I'm gonna do it okay and then you would just tighten up okay but you will be working in the round so you're not going to slip stitch to this chain right here what I am going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this black yarn to make a stitch marker. Okay? Because I'm going to need that in just a minute. So my next step is, is to find where I need to go in to put my first two stitches. Okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to put two in each of these around for a count of 12. Okay, Sammy said the video paused, but it's fine now. Okay, great. Okay, so um, you're gonna find you're gonna find where your last stitch was, and that's where you're gonna go in. And sometimes it's hard to find. It looks like you may should go into here, but really the best thing to do to find out where you need to go is to count back six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Remember to always count the loop on your hook. Okay, so we're gonna go right into this stitch here. right into there and do two single crochets hi Melinda thank you Sammy I'm so gonna use those okay and then you're gonna go to your next one and do two and you're just gonna do that all the way around for a count of 12 So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve. Okay, so I'm just going to count back and make sure I've got my twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, counting the loop on my hook. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put my stitch marker here, right here. Oh, that's a great idea, Melinda. She says she uses um colored paper clips for stitch markers. I actually have a bunch of plastic stitch markers, but I hate them. <laughs> they always get lost. Uh, I don't like, to me, it's harder. It's easier to just pull out the yarn than it is to just put that little plastic thing in and keep fastening it, unfastening it. Um, but Sammy is sending me, because Sammy, um, one of my viewers here who's on live today, is awesome. And she's making some stitch markers. And they look like you could just kind of just go right in with them. So I'm excited. Um, to get that I was really excited okay so we did our 12 and what we're gonna do now is we're going to do our one and two if you're used to my videos you know this is our crochet aerobics and we're going to put one in the next then two in the next one one in the next two in the next one so you're gonna go into your next stitch and put one single crochet then you're gonna go into your next and put two Then you're going to go into your next and put one and go into your next and put two and into your next one and into your next two 
and you should have a stitch count of 18. And just to let you guys know, um, we started off with six. That means that these increases will be an increase of six. So every time you go to an increase round, know that it should go up by six. So we started off with 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay? So we went up by six. So at the end of this round, you should have 18. On the next one, you're gonna go up by six again. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So at the end of that round, you should have 24. And that would keep going up by six as far as you wanna go. I hope that makes sense and is helpful for counting purposes. And now I've just lost my own count. So two in there, one, and then pull out your stitch marker and you're always gonna end with two single crochets in this spot right here. So if you were with me to make the bunny, and if you've been with me so many times before, you know how this, how this, increase, how this increasing works. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to my next round, and I'm going to do what I call the two and two. So I'm gonna go into my very next stitch, and I'm gonna put one single crochet then I'm gonna go into my next and put a single crochet. And then in the next one, I'm going to do two single crochets. And again, in the next, a single crochet. And the next, a single crochet. And in the next, two single crochets. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. And like I said before, at the end of this, you should have a stitch count of 24. And this is all you're doing for this bunny. You're just doing increases. And see that kind of came out normally I would go back and undo because that would drive me crazy but we're doing a video and I'm just showing y'all how to do this so it's no big deal okay we're on our last we know we're gonna put two single crochets I pull out my stitch marker Put two single crochets okay and then I put my stitch marker right back so I'm gonna do one more row of increases with you because I know that you know how to do this and so then I'm gonna tell you what to do after that but let's just do one more row so we're gonna do three two now so we're going to single crochet one in the next three stitches one go into the next one go into the next one and then into the next one, you're going to put two. You're gonna do that all the way around. And you should have a stitch count of 30 when you're done. Okay, so that's just what we're doing all the way around three single crochets and in the fourth two single crochets Okay, so you just keep going all the way around like that and at the end you should have 30 now what I want you to do is keep increasing just like we've been doing till you get to 10. So you're going to keep, we just did three and two, then you're going to do four and two, five and two, six and two, seven and two, and so on and so forth. 
As you're counting, make sure that you're going up by six for every single row. Now, I'm not gonna do that on video. We've done this so much. I know my viewers know how to do this. If you have any problems with this, please um, go to my <clears throat> beginner crochet videos and please go to my rabbit videos that show you how to increase over and over and over again but this i just wanted to show you in case you didn't know how to increase what to do so you're going to keep doing that until you get to 10 and 2 okay and then you're going to stop at that point your circle okay should be that big and this part right here is going to be the middle of your bunny okay so now we're gonna move on, as I've showed you how you're gonna do the head. And now I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna show you how to do the ears. Now the ears are gonna take a hot minute because they have, they switch up a lot. It's not, you know, normal. <laughs> so the ears are gonna take us a second. Remember, you're gonna need two of those, unless you want a one-eared bunny. So pulling up my pattern over here, guys. Got it written down so I can look at it. So let's go back down and now we're going to start just like we did for the head we're going to start with you can either do a magic circle and then put six single crochet into that magic circle or you can chain two and put six single crochets into the second chain from the hook one two three four, five, and six. And then I just pull it shut or closed or whatever. <laughs> Close in that circle just like you would for a magic circle, okay? Then I'm gonna find my, um, my uh, first stitch of my six here, and I know that that's right there. Remember, you can count back if you have a hard time finding it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember to always count this one where your loop is. <clears throat> I'm gonna go right into here. Working in the circle, in the round. That means I'm not sl slip stitching to close. I'm gonna go right in there and I'm gonna do two single crochets in this first one. And then two single crochets in each one around to count for 12. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, and 12, okay? Then you might need to pull this closed again, especially if you did the two and six, it doesn't close up quite as tight as the magic circle. That's why a lot of people choose to use the magic circle. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna put my stitch marker in. Okay. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to start off very similarly to how we did with the um, head. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do one and two. So we're going to go right into our first stitch and do one single crochet. Then we're going to go into our next and do two single crochets. And you're going to do that all the way around for a stitch count of 18. So just doing one and two all the way around. You should end on two, so pull that stitch marker out. And then do two right here in the last one. Okay. And 
and now you're going to do two and two. So, and let me get my pen here so I can mark this off as I go. So now we're gonna do the two and two. So we're gonna go right into our next available stitch. We're gonna put one single crochet. Then we're gonna go into the next and do a single crochet. And then we're gonna go into the next and do two single crochets. And into the next one single crochet. Into the next one single crochet. And then into the next two single crochets. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. And you should have a stitch count of 24. Again, you're gonna be in multiples of six. one, one, and two. Okay, we're at the last, so we're gonna pull out our stitch marker and we're going to put two single crochets right here. Just like that. And then we're going to Put our stitch marker back in here okay now this is where for the ear that this changes up a little bit when you're doing the head you would just continue on increasing as normal but now we're going to jump up and we're going to do five and two so that means we're going to go into the next five stitches and put one single crochet so there's one two three four and five and then into the next one you're going to put two single crochets and then you would repeat that all the way around so again five one two three four and five and then the next two Okay, so we're at our last five here. One, two, three, I'm trying to make sure I'm not out of the camera as well. Y'all can see what I'm doing. Four and five. And then you're right here at your stitch marker, so you're gonna take that out you're going to put two single crochets and then you're going to put your stitch marker right back oh thank you Rita <laughs> okay so we did our five and two and now we're going to do six and two okay so for the next um, the next six stitches you're going to put one single crochet and in the seventh, you're going to put two single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then two single crochets. One and two. And just keep doing that all the way around, six and two. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then two. And this is just creating the look that we need for the top of our um, bunny ear.
Remember when you're doing any kind of, and this is still considered amigurami because it's stuffed. It's not like a flat applique per se. So remember to keep your stitches tight. So we're in our last six here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then take out the stitch marker. And then in the last one, you're going to put two. One and two. And then you're gonna put your stitch marker back. As you can see, that's kind of coming up a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull my string there in the middle to pull it down. But let's put the stitch marker back. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is two rows of single crochet. So you're just simply gonna go around for two rows of single crochet. So how's everyone doing? Have you had an awesome Thursday? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I've had to do a lot of, um, and Rita, I'm glad you're doing good. Um, I want to go ahead and have surgery on my hands um, for my corporal tunnel so that I can do better and longer videos and I can crochet on my own pleasantly. <laughs> um, so pull this stitch, uh, stitch marker out as you get there to the end. Make sure you do that. Put your last single crochet there. Put your stitch marker back and then do your second row of single crochet um but yeah um but of course i've just had a lot of other stuff going on too as well i have an ulcer so i've had to go into about that and then i've had to um have a lot of um had some teeth work done had to have some wisdom teeth removed that i never had done as a child so it's just like there's just so much so i don't know when i'm going to do that yet i'm a little I'm definitely gonna do it I'm overcoming my fear um, but I need to be able to function and um, you basically lose a hand um, for each surgery so and they take quite a while to heal and um, so like let's say they did the left first then I would not be able to use it this left hand until it was totally healed once it was totally healed then they would do my right they would do my right hand so it's just a matter of timing it right. Um, I won't be able to be on YouTube. I won't be able to um, take care of my home, work, do all kinds of things. So it's just a lot to think about when you're going into it. Um, so just got to figure all that out. And I need to still go back and I had my one side of my wisdom teeth done. And now I've gotta go back for the other side, so. Um, I'm gonna get that out of the way first. That's been a bit traumatizing for me. <laughs> um, so anyway, Tylenol and ibuprofen have been um, my go-to. <laughs> but I'm getting better, so all is good. God is good. Okay, so we're coming back around um, 
for our second row of single crochets. Almost done with that. Okay, so pull that out. Oh, th thank you, Rita, but I'm, I'm doing good. I, I have no complaints. Well, <laughs> I could think of some complaints, but honestly, as a whole, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so we did our two rows of single crochet, so now we're gonna start decreasing. So this is as big as that bunny ear. This is the top of that bunny ear is what we're making. Let me pull this up. So we're making that rounded top right there. So now we're gonna start decreasing to go back down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do six single crochets. So we're gonna do one single crochet in the next six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've done our six, and so in the next two, we're going to do a decrease, and we're gonna do an invisible decrease, two together. Call it whatever, As some uh, when you see it in patterns, it'll stay T-O-G, uh, two together, or it can be called a decrease. So um, basically what you're going to do is you're gonna go into the front loop, and you're gonna do this for every decrease here on out, or two together. So you're gonna go into the front loop only, you're gonna pull up your yarn, don't go through anything, Go into your next stitch, front loop only, pull up your yarn, don't go through anything, and go through all three. If you watch my videos all the time, you're probably tired of hearing this, but <laughs> in case someone is wanting to see how to make this pillow and they've never seen any other of my videos, that's how you do an invisible decrease or an invisible two together, okay? So now we're just gonna go on and we're going to do a single crochet in the next six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you, again, you're going to do an invisible decrease. You're gonna go right through this front loop only, pull up, don't go through anything. Go to your next stitch, front loop only, pull up, and then go through all three. And then you're going to do six again. So that's what you're gonna do. You're going to do six single crochets, and then you're going to do two together for a decrease. So there's two, three, four, five, and six, and then go into your next, pull up, go into your next, pull up, and then go through all three, just like that. Now the more things that you make like this, the more you see how the patterns work, and you may be able to make your own um, stuffed animals and your own uh, patterns. Okay, so again, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so now we're on our last two, and we're going to go into these last two, and, and also where your um, stitch marker is, we're going to go into these two to make our decrease. So pull out that stitch marker, and you're going to go into your next available stitch going through the front loop only pull up and next available stitch pull up and go through all three and that's where you're going to end for each decrease round you're going to end on your stitch marker with two together okay hope that makes sense so now what we're going to do is we're going to do one single crochet all the way around so we're just going to go One single crochet. And doing one single crochet in between these is what gives that bunny that oval, the, the ear, the oval look that we need. If we just continue to do decreases without any single crochet rounds in between, it would um, end up just being a circle. Okay?
Okay, so pull out that last, the stitch marker for your last single crochet and then put it right back in. Okay, and now you're going to do five and two decrease. So <clears throat> you're going to go into the next five stitches and do one single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're going to do the decrease two together like I showed you how to do before, only going through the front loops. So I'm just going to go right through this front loop, pull up, go into my next front loop pull up and then go through all three and then five single crochets one two three four and five and then in the next again another two together front loops only Um, Rita, do you mean to make the ears smaller you can stop or the head? Uh, are you talking about the ears? She's asking um, if you can stop at any time you make it smaller. So I'm not sure what you mean if you're talking about the ears. So we're ending on two together here. And then we're going to put our stitch marker right back. And then we're going to do a round of single crochets. Oh yeah, um, she was talking about the head, and absolutely, you can stop at any point you want, and it could be smaller. Um, as far as the ears go, um, you'll just have to sh to do my pattern um, that I'm showing on video. If you want to make them smaller, you can just look and see how you could, once you get done making my ear, maybe you could make it a little shorter somehow if you wanted to do that. Yeah, if you're making a bear, Rita, that's a good point. Um, she says, you know, the ears if I'm making a bear. So you could um, you could not do as much for the bunny if you wanted to make the bunny head smaller. Um, if you're doing a bear, though, you could keep it that big. It would be fine. And then for the ears, um, yeah, you could totally even stop at this round even, and it would look like a bear ear. And you could just stuff them or leave them flat and put them on either side of the head so then it would look more like a bear yeah great idea okay um, and that just goes to show you again that is a perfect example of um, how that you can take um, these patterns and um, change them up and kind of do what you want with them so still going around for my single crochet here Yeah, but like once you learn these basic shapes, you can make all kinds of stuff with them. Um, and remember, if you can make a circle, you know, if you've learned how to increase and decrease, um, and you can make a circle, uh, you can make a doll. Um, so yeah, 
Okay, so let's pull that out. We're on our last one here, put our last single crochet there. Put our stitch marker back. And now we're going to do four and two. So one, four and two together. So in the next four stitches, you're gonna put one single crochet. So I just did one. So there's two, three, and four. And then the next two together, going only through the front loops. opinion is um, even if you take my pattern and you change it up and you make something different out of it you're just using the basic core principles then that's your pattern you've made a pattern at that point so if you look at this pattern that I'm doing on the video and you switch it up and you do a bear or you do I don't care a snowman whatever um, then that's, that's your pattern at that point because these are basic crochet techniques that I'm using. All I'm doing is changing numbers around and stuff to create something. Okay, so we're gonna pull this out here and then we're gonna do our last two together or decrease, whatever you call it. Okay, and then we're gonna put this right back And then, you guessed it, we're going to do one single crochet around. And uh, that's my kid playing a video game in the background. <sighs> He's playing Overwatch. So. He's being a little loud. I think he's forgotten that I'm doing a live video. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our row of single crochets here. And this is what it looks like so far. It's going to start caving in, which is exactly what you want in the middle there. We're going to put our stitch marker right back. Okay, and at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, because now you know how this works, you know that we're decreasing, so if you need to, you can pause or you can write this down, whatever you need to do, but I'm about to show you how to um, finish this ear, okay? So we just did four and two decrease, four single crochets and two together, and then we did a row of one single crochets. Now what you're going to do is, you guessed it, you're going to do three single crochets and two together. Then you're going to do two rounds of single crochets. Then you're going to do, you guessed it, two single crochets and two together. And then you're going to do four rounds of single crochets. And by the time you're done with that, your ear is going to look just like that. And you're gonna need two of those. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna show you how to do um, the bow. If you have any questions about that, please let me know, but I just, you know, we kind of, we went over everything with the increases and decreases, so I figured you should, you know, you'll know how to do that by just me telling you. The only difference is, is you're gonna start doing two rounds of single crochets. So for this bow, I used um, pink, but for the video, I'm just gonna use some white. Um, because I don't have any more of that pink. 
So I'm just going to use some white and I'm going to show you how I made that. I did make a bow for my bunny. If you've already done that and you want to use that pattern for that, you can. Um, this is just a simpler... Oh, trying to grab my charger. The camera is trying to go dead. Um, this is just a simpler version of that. It's not quite as big and it's more, it's flatter. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a slip knot. You're, and um, Rita, since you're on here, I think you're the only one left on Facebook Live uh, because it's getting late and people are probably eating and have better things to do. Um, but Rita, did that make sense about the ear when I explained how to go further? Might take her a minute to respond. So anyways, for um, the bow, you're going to do a slip knot and then you're going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that's what it looks like right there. Then you're going to go from the second chain from the hook, which right here is this one. You're not going to work into that one. You're going to go into the very next, and you're going to do a half double crochet. Okay, Rita said yes. Thank you, Rita. And you're going to do a half double crochet all the way down for a count of 19. So... And that's all you're going to do is you're just, I'm going to do this one row with you. Um, but you're just going to go all the way down for half double crochets. And the reason why this bow is um, flatter, it doesn't have, for the, the bow that I made for my big bunny for that video, um, you actually did a lot of rows of half double crochet, and then you basically folded it over and joined them together. And that's because that bunny was big, it was stuffed, and the bow was sitting on the top of the head, so it needed to have, be large and have definition. But because this is flat against a pillow, it's just flat, you don't really need that. Um, and it looks good just to keep it that way. So that's why you don't really need to do as many for this one. But I'm just going to go down and show you how to turn in case you haven't ever done this before. So again, just going all the way down with half double crochets. In case you don't know how to do a half double crochet, you just yarn over, go into your stitch, pull up your yarn, and then go through all three. Okay, so we're on our last half double crochet here. Okay, and for a half double crochet, you chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to be working right here in this first space. Okay, so you're going to go back for 19 again. So there's the first one, then you would go into the next, and you would just go all the way down with half double crochets. Okay, and you're going to do, looks like I did seven rows, seven rows of half double crochets, and you'll just chain one, turn your work, keep doing that back and forth, back and forth, until you have seven rows. Okay, so that bow right there has seven rows of half double crochets. When you get done with your seven rows of half double crochets, you will take any kind of color that you choose, and then you will work around the middle of the bow and then on the back side, just go in and out with your darning needle to secure it, voila, and then you can sew it on, okay? So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make these yarn eyes. I did not use buttons. I used only yarn for this. I thought it looked fine. You can use buttons. 
you can use anything you want. You can sew buttons on, you can hot glue, you can do anything you want. Again, I have to say in all my videos, if you are making this for a small child, please make sure that everything is secure. It would probably not be a good idea to use hot glue if you are giving this to a small child because it could come undone easier than if you actually sewed it in. Having said that, Things can still come undone when a child is chewing, chomping, or playing with something. So just use discretion. Okay, so to make these eyes that you saw on the bunny, what I did was very simple. I did a slip knot. I chained two. This is black. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you can't see it. Or you can do a magic circle, whichever one you want to do. But I chained two. I went into the second chain from the hook and I did six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then I tightened that up really tight and I went and found my first or my last six counted back make sure I had six and then I went into this this one right here my first single crochet it's hard to get into and I slip stitch together okay and that is my eye so then I worked in my back I made two of these and I sewed them on to my bunny and that's all that is right there okay it's just uh, chain two, six single crochets in the second chain from the hook, or a magic circle with six single crochets in the middle. Okay, that's all I did. Then I simply, just like I did for my big bunny, I looped my yarn round and round. I used the pink round and round and round to make my nose, and then I went down and over to make my mouth. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to bring this bunny down. And we're going to get into the nitty gritty here okay so let's say you've done all your work you've done your feather stitch you've um, done what I told you to do I'm going to repeat that again you you did a chain of 50 you did 20 rows again you can make this pillow as big or as small as you want to I'm just telling you what I did um, but remember like I said before and when you watch the feather stitch video you need to do it in multiples of 10 so that you always end up on an odd number. Okay, that's very important for this feather stitch. But as you can see, it makes a beautiful pillow. Um, so I did 50, went round and round and round for 20 rows, and then I ended with a row of half double crochet, which you can see here at the top. Okay, before you do any stuffing inside this, oh yeah, and remember what I said? After you sew these two together, kind of there you can see a little bit of a seam but hardly you can't see a seam at all but what you're gonna do I'm gonna take this pillow out okay so what you would do is I'm gonna turn this inside out okay just so you can see I want you to be able to see what this is gonna look like okay so you have sewn your bottom and your sides together Okay, that's what you need to do um, and then you'll have this open at the very top then what you would do is you would turn it inside out okay turn it inside out of course your bunny isn't on here at this point but you would turn it inside out after you sewed all that okay and then you can start with your bunny or you can do it on the separate one however you want to do it but it's easier to do all that flip it inside out and then do your bunny so once you finish the bunny you would place I mean the bunny head you would place the bunny head on the, where you want it to be I placed it one round up for the bottom of the head and I sewed all the way around using my sand colored red heart all the way around and I left one little place to stuff and I just started stuffing the head. I stuffed it as full as I wanted, and then I sewed in that little end. Then I took my two ears, 
and I put them right at the base of the top of the head and I sewed them in. But when I did that, I noticed that they wanted to flip down, my ears did. So I joined them right here together, going through the other side of the pillow so that they would stay in place. And then after I finished my bow, I sewed my bow on right here. It is also going, making sure to go through the actual feather stitch side of the pillow, not just the ear so that it'll be secured correctly. And then I did my eyes, my nose, um, and my mouth, okay? And so to finish this up, what you would do, you can stuff it or you can cover it, um, use it as a pillow cover, which is what I'm gonna do. And I think that has cat hair all over it. But anyways, um, so what I would do is, is I would just, whatever pillow I have in the house that I wanna cover, um, these can be undone later. Um, after Easter, you can keep them here and then bring them back out for the next holiday. Um, I love that about these. Um, so what I would do is, if I'm gonna do it as a cover or if I'm gonna do it as stuffing, I'm just going to um, push this in as far as I can. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna show you how to close this, okay? So I'm gonna take my white yarn I'm gonna undo that when I just started with. I'm gonna take my darning needle, and this will be great anyway because it'll show you how I joined the other sides, okay? So I'm gonna take about, I don't know, two feet and cut off. I've got it on my darning needle. At the end, I'm going to make a slip knot, okay? So I've made my slip knot. And like I said, whether you're covering a pillow or you're stuffing it, either way, this is how you're going to close the top, okay? So I'm right up here at the top and I've got it lined up and I'm just gonna start going through both loops on each side, okay? So I'm gonna go right through there, pull it through, I made it really long. <laughs> then I'm going to go through my slip knot and then I'm going to tighten it. Okay. And then I'm going to work over this piece as I go along. So I'm going to lay that flat across here and then I'm going to go through two on this side, two on the other side. I'm going to try to line it up as best I can and I'm going to work through this piece as I go. Okay, so we're just gonna do this together. And then my pillow will be done too. <laughs> so we're just going to, and it can be hard once you stuff this. Also, just to let you know, if you're using regular stuffing, if you're not using it as a pillow cover, um, it's it can be a little bit awkward because you're going to be um, holding this down while stuffing stuff in. Um, but what I do want to tell you is you can put so much stuffing in, you can sew halfway down or, or just a little where you have just a little bit left and then keep stuffing it more. Okay. So anyways, you just keep, we're just going to do this on camera. And now that I've done this corner, I'm going to bring this pillow that's inside it up to that corner as well. So it'll be there. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. And let me, sorry, I was off camera there for a minute. It's kind of hard. It's a big pillow. So I'm just going. all the way down as you can see I'm just stuffing this in as I go and I'm just literally covering an old pillow in the house um, this I will probably not undo because it is just an old pillow so when I store my Easter stuff yeah you could do that Rita um, so when I store my Easter stuff I'll just leave this pillow intact the way it is um, but 
but you could undo this later if you wanted to use it as a pillow cover and you didn't want it to be there forever. Okay, so I'm just kind of again gripping here as I go along. But it is important that you do stuff it some ways quite a bit before you start sewing because it'll be really hard to stuff this um, all the way through one small hole because it is a pretty large pillow. If it was smaller, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But um, anyway, so I'm trying to make sure to go through both. Okay. As I'm going along, I'm trying to keep them lined up and I'm trying to go through both sides here. So I'm going through this V and then I'm going through this V right under both of them as I go along. Um, that'll help to hide anything as much as possible. Okay. This will still, you will still be able to see a little bit of a seam. Okay. So, but I just wanted to do this so we can see what the finished, it's been sitting like this forever as I've been waiting to make this video, so I'd like to finish it up. Just going through, and if yours does not line up perfectly, don't stress out, just keep going. If you notice you miss one or something happened, just keep going. It's it's okay. It's no big deal. It'll still look good. And trying to make sure I'm on camera so that you can see. Hopefully I did enough where I don't have to um, reload more yarn onto my darning needle. But if for some reason you do, you're just going to leave enough end here to work in back in. Remember three is the charm, work it in three times, cut it off, and then make a new one just like we started at the beginning, starting with our slip knot and then working over our scraggly piece. So you just do that. If you did not you know, cut off a long enough piece, you just start over again, just like you did. Just make sure to work in your ends. Okay, hope that makes sense. So we're just coming over here and I'm making sure to get the pillow that's inside all the way to the corner so it catches its shape, if that makes sense. Because once it's in here, um, if, it's, if you're working with an actual pillow and not stuffing, it's gonna be hard to shape it. So I wanna try to get it to the corner as best as possible okay so we're almost done here and I've got <laughs> because this was sitting around it's got cat hair on it, it's driving me crazy so we're nearing the end here so what you would want to do if you were using stuffing for this is you would want to stop partially like you might want to stop here and put more stuffing in you can stop here and at this point it would be your last probably your last uh, um, opportunity to put stuffing in so at this point you want to really stuff in use your hands to um, make it look exactly the way that you want to to manipulate it remember pillows are made with machines so when you're making pillows with crochet and you're stuffing them or you're making animals your hands are your machines so as you're molding something you're using your hands to to push in that stuffing and get it exactly where you want it and how you want it okay so just gonna finish up here I think I actually did have enough yarn which is uncommon for me. So I think I did about, honestly, I said two feet, but I think it was about three. So just know if you are doing this, um, three feet should suffice. So I'm coming right up to the end here. Just gonna go right into there. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do my three as a charm, go right in, I'm gonna go right into the middle of the pillow. So there's one, two, and I'm going to work it in somewhere down here 
and like I said, sometimes I do more, so I feel like doing four. So I'm gonna pull it up right there, and then I'm going to pull tight and cut off, okay? And that is how you make that pillow. And you see, I think it looks really cool. So I'm just going to fluff it a little bit, <laughs> shake my entire desk, uh, and just kind of fluff it up and see if maybe I can put it back a little bit so you can see. Let me move my camera down. Okay, so now everything is done. I've got my pillow in there. It's a little loose in there, um, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. If you wanted yours a little tighter, just make sure that you measure the pillow that you're going to be putting inside this so you can get your measurements perfect. Um, unless you're using stuffing and then it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you have enough stuffing. Remember, if you're using stuffing, it takes way more than you think it does. <laughs> also remember that you can use old pillows around the house and pull the stuffing out of them. You can use old stuffed animals um, that nobody's using anymore. Just, you know, like you have a big bear that nobody even wants or cares about. Unstuff that sucker and reuse it. It's great for our environment and it's great for your pocketbook. So just think about those things as you're making stuff, you know, so that you can repurpose okay so we're all done I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please let me know please um, as you make stuff um, please feel free to share pictures I love to see everyone's pictures of the stuff that they made um, and like I said at the beginning please like share subscribe do all those wonderful things if you're on Facebook live please like and share as well um, hit that notify button on the Facebook live so you can see when my videos are coming up live and you won't ever miss one and happy crocheting guys thanks for watching have a great weekend bye bye